Some time ago, I reviewed this knife, a budget knife from the company QSP. This is the Bison. Well, not long ago, I was in contact with the company QSP, and they offered me their version 2 of the Bison, and I have that to share with you today. If you're interested in hearing about that knife, plus another new little knife from QSP, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank the company QSB for sending me the version 2 of the Bison so that I could share it with you. And the next thing is, in this video, I'm not going to do a lot of demonstrations, nor am I going to go over the specifications for this knife, because with one exception, this knife is identical to the version 1 and, of course, will perform identically as well. So all of that information is available in the original video. So what I'll do is link that video at the end of this one and put the link in the video description below. So if you are interested in all of that information, I'd ask you to go back and take a look at that first video. I will, of course, give you close-ups of the version 2 and compare it with the version 1 so you can see what that improvement is all about. All right, let's get started. Now, what I'll do is just bring it in and show you the knife close-up. You can see that it has a really quite nice uh, G10 handle on it clip point design or design jimping on the back up here sharpening choil here a little bit of a guard and finger choil down here lanyard hole the scales are removable with torx wrench or torx key uh, wrenches i did put a piece of paracord through because i like i always do just in case i drop it qsp symbol at the top of the blade there D2 here. All right, let me bring in the original knife so you can see the difference. And I'm going to talk about what I thought of the original knife and how it can, how it was improved with this knife. So here is, well, it might make more difference or show better if I do it this way. So there is the original knife on top. It's exactly the same blade length. It is exactly the same materials used throughout. The only difference is, and this is where it will show up, is when I bring the two of them together and you can see just how much longer the handle is on the V2. And for me, that makes a world of difference in handling this knife. In that original video, one of the comments I had about the Bison was that while I liked a lot of the things about it, one of the things that I found was a bit of a handicap was the fact that the handle was rather short. As you can see, my hand swallows it up and my baby finger does go over the end of the handle. Now, it is true, I do have XL to double XL hands, so that is true of a lot of knives that this will happen, but this just seemed a little bit shorter than it needed to be for a knife of this style. Well, QSP listened. Now, whether they listened to me or other people, I'm not sure, but with this improvement, look at that. Look how much of the handle sticks out underneath my baby finger there. It is altogether different holding this knife. It just feels that much more comfortable. I can use it in a number of grips and feel very comfortable using it. And my hand does not feel cramped or and it does not feel in any way like I've lost control over the knife. Not that I dislike the original knife. Again, I really did. It just felt a little bit of a handicap by having the short handle. Now, I want to show you the original knife just for a moment because I want to address a few of the things that I said about the knife in that original video. You can see that there is a difference in color between the handles. This, the original knife did come the same color as this one. Part of what you're seeing is my efforts to improve the handle a little bit. One of the things I said in that original video was that I found it a bit blocky on the edges. They just seemed a little bit too squared and I felt they could have been rounded off. Let me see if I can show you that with version two because that still exists. Can you see how it's a bit blocky at the edges? Well, that was just so, so easy to deal with. Just a little bit of sandpaper, took the corners off on all the four corners there, rounded it off a little bit, got a little carried away, ran the very fine sandpaper over the knife, and you can see it comes out to closer to a polished type of G10 micarta. Why don't I have that written down? I'll put it in the video in a second, what it is, G10 or micarta. It certainly looks like G10. 
but it could be micarta. All right, aside from that, so you can see that it does polish up quite nice. Now, maybe you don't want it that polished. Maybe you want it that little bit rougher look. Well, then just roughen it up with a little bit of sandpaper and it'll do exactly the same. So improving this knife was so, so easy. And I'm going to do the same thing to this knife after this video. I'm just going to take those edges off. I may just leave it that rougher look to it because it does aid in traction a little bit. All right, so that is the improvement for these two knives, the length of the handle and a big improvement it is. But here's the thing that remains the same and I still would like to see addressed. You are not gonna throw sparks off of this spine. You're not gonna scrape fat wood or any other type of wood or any material with this spine. It is just too rounded here. Not unless you want to take the time and a file or a grinder and make it flat, which is very doable, but uh, I don't know. Now, I, there is a plus to that. It is very comfortable on your thumb for any number of carving tours. That remains very, very comfortable. But for the one thing that less bushcrafters like to do, which is scrape fire steels, scrape wood, fat wood or whatever, that's not going to do anything for you. So I just want to point that out that that still remains the same. For me, it's still a little thin through here, but not much. It is pretty. I'll tell you, just that length of that handle, I can't believe how much of a difference it made for me holding on to this. I still would like it a little thicker, and because these handles are removable, I can do that. I can take them off, put in some liner material, and uh, just thicken it up a little bit. Of course, it's not going to fit the sheath when I do that, but that's something I can deal with. Let me just show you the sheath, by the way. So the sheath remains identical to the first one, the f and uh, I have that on my belt right now, but it is just, it is a nice Kydex sheath, fold-over design. The belt loop is adjustable up and down, depending on how tall you like to carry it, and it is removable altogether because they did also send a tech lock with it. So you have the choice of whether you want to wear it with a regular sheath and uh, belt loop or with a tech lock. And so it's nice to have those two options. One of my original uh, comments still applies. This is, it's strong enough, but it's just very, very flexible. And I guess there's two sides to that. This doesn't mean that it will move on my belt. Uh, maybe a little bit too much. It's nice when you go to sit down, it allows that movement there, but sometimes you just want it a little bit stiffer on the belt. Now, for me, the other thing is I do like a drop sheaf. I do like a dangler on it, and this just rides a little bit high as you can see so but that's not an issue I can put a dangler on that but can you see how that just seems to want to wander away from the belt loop a little bit so if you want a stiffer uh, belt loop than this then easy enough to replace with a piece of leather if that's what you want these are small things theirs are not deal breakers overall this knife remains with the same high quality as does the first one d2 steel Clip point design, unsharpened swedge, but just minor, high saber grind, almost full flat grind, jimping that is not overly aggressive, but still quite effective. Yeah, it's just a nice budget knife design. All right, I have one more knife I want to show you because this is new to me and I really like it. All right, I did say I had another knife I want to share with you. So this is the QSP Canary a tiny little neck knife. And what a nice little knife this is. Now, my wife made fun of me the other day when I was showing her this neck knife and I referred to it as cute. She said, you're about the only person I know that can refer to a knife as cute. Uh, okay, knife lovers out there, back me up. This is a cute knife, right? Do you agree with me? <laughs> At least I think it is. It's a sweet little knife and very, very functional. So let me just go over a few of the specifications for it and I'll give you my thoughts on it. So I am gonna have to refer to my notes, but uh, all right. So it is overall 5.25 inches in length or 133 millimeters. The blade is a scant 2.5 inches or 63 millimeters. The handle is 2.75 inches or 70 millimeters. The weight, are you ready for this? Two ounces. That's it. Just two ounces or 58 grams. Now, if you add the sheath in, it brings it up to 2.7 ounces or 78 grams. 
The steel is 14C28N stainless steel, which I think is a really good steel for this knife. Now, I'll just give you some close-ups of it. I think, well, maybe I should show you the sheath first. Small Kydex sheath. It's got the carbon fiber look on it, and it did come with this ball chain. Now, normally with neck knives, I will replace the ball chain because I'm just a little afraid of them breaking. I've left it on to see how long it will go without breaking, and so far it's been actually stronger than I expect. I'll probably still sub it out for some paracord at a later time, but for now it's okay like this. Oh, I'll show you putting the knife in the sheath. Sits in really well. It is not going to come loose, not by shaking or anything else, but comes out easy enough. Now, some close-ups of the knife, and I'll tell you my thoughts on it. So as you can see, it is a high saber grind. It has a, it's not a clip point so much as a round, it's almost a spear point right to the center point. It does have an unsharpened swedge, although very slight. You can see that the handles have, it is micarta, isn't it? Yes, micarta have been hollowed out. I ran a piece of paracord through, a uh, bit of a short handle, but that's okay because with the intent of this knife, it's not, it should, really doesn't need to be any longer. But by putting a piece of paracord through, it does give me almost an extra grip right at the end there with that little knot on it. And I do like putting my bright green paracord on knives that I take out of the woods in case I drop them. Now the scales are removable with a Torx wrench if you really want to. As I mentioned, full tang design. Now, take a look at the jimping. Hopefully that's going to show up there. It's a, a very fancy jimping on the back. Now that is decorative. It, well, it's more than decorative. There is a little bit of traction on there, but not a whole lot really. But it is nice to see that there, except one thing. You're not going to scrape anything with this knife either. You're not going to scrape a fire steel or anything else. It just won't happen. It has a nice uh, it's not quite a stone wash. It's more of a satin finish on it. I really like the choice of steels. The 14C28N is a good steel. It is just above being called a budget steel. It is certainly not a super steel, but it is a good steel used by companies like Mora for their Garberg. So, you know, it is a good steel. The reason why I feel this is a really good choice for this knife is wearing it around my neck, and I have been for quite a bit lately. I'll tell you about my experiences in a moment. I find that having it close to my body that occasionally I will perspire at least heat up a little bit. So that creates a bit of a humid or a moist environment where the knife is. Stainless steel is a really good choice for any knife that you're going to be wearing close to your body for that reason. I do have another neck knife that I'll be reviewing or have reviewed probably by the time this video comes out, which is uh, made of carbon steel, SK5, and it is prone to not so well. It have I have seen a couple of dots of rust on it, but also uh, prone to uh, turning colors. So we'll talk more about that at, at that time. So that's my reason for liking stainless steel on a little tiny neck knife like this. Really, really nice little knife. So what are my experiences? Well, as I say, I have been wearing, I only took it off of my neck, bringing it out here into the woods so that I could share the sheath with you. But uh, it is easy to forget you're wearing this at two ounces or 2.7 with the sheath. Uh, it's so easy to forget. I have been wearing it around the city as an alternative to a pocket knife. Uh, it has served me very well. Got to be careful. I have actually forgotten at times that I had it on. Unzip your jacket and your knife is hanging out where people can see it. So you just have to be a little cautious of how you wear it that way. But it is certainly a functional little everyday carry knife. And out here in the woods, it just serves the tasks that, well, like today, I was opening up some snacks and getting ready for my lunch. And this is what I use for opening up the packaging because it was just, it was there and I just pull it off and it's ready to use as that is is the role of a neck knife. So yeah, I find that this is really nice. It's a nice looking knife, cute or not. It's a nice looking knife. It's almost like a piece of bushcraft jewelry in a way, but functional just the same. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, as I mentioned, this was just intended to be a bit of a short video, not a full-on skills demonstration with the QSB Vice and version 2, because as I mentioned, it performs identically to the version 1, and you can go back and watch that video 
just more comfortably. And that's what I can say about it, just more comfortably, at least for my XL hands. Whether or not you feel the need for that larger handle, I expect that there's a lot of people that would like to have it. So keep an eye out for the version two when it becomes available in your area. I will of course be putting links to this knife in the video description below, as well as to the Canary, because it is just a sweet little knife. Oh, I don't think I mentioned about the Canary. This is only one of many versions of the Canary that are available. There's even a Damascus steel version. Talk about piece of bushcraft jewelry. That's a sweet looking little knife, of course, but there are other scale colors as well. So you can pick out the one you want. This is what uh, QSP sent me so that I could share it with you. Um, nice little knife, and these are in the budget range. Now the QSP Bison runs about $80 US, so I'm going to consider that a budget knife. Not the cheapest knife on the market, but when you consider the quality of manufacture and the materials being used, it puts it really into the budget knife range, or at least an affordable Val high value knife. All right, that's all I have to say. If you have any comments or questions about the QSP Vi Bison version two or the Canary, please put them in the comment section below. Again, all the information I have for these will be in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.